Hey, welcome. Today I would like to talk about the TPL data flow in C Sharp. So let's get started. Uh, it is part of the task parallel library in .NET and it, you want to basically use it when uh, you want to uh, use a model which is something similar to an actor based programming as I've highlighted here. And it is some uh, message passing for coarse grain data flow and pipelining tasks. So that's kind of the main usage. Uh, to make uh, parallel programming easier and there may be some tasks which are more amenable to that. So let's get started. So first thing you want to do is to install the NuGet package uh, task.dataflow which I already have done and I've started a program here in which I will demonstrate this. So you can see this program basically uh, prints hello world and it's got a stopwatch which starts a stopwatch and uh, stops it and I print uh, the amount of time elapsed here. So you can see it printing hello world and it is done in zero uh, milliseconds. So that's all good. So let's see if we can uh, get some uh, TPL data block inserted. So what I've done here is I'm creating what is called an action block. So this is an action block and it is a generic. So you can specify what kind of message it's going to get. And here I'm specifying that it is only going to get an integer. And as you can see, as it is parameterized here, it's getting an integer timeout. And I'm going to essentially sleep in this action block for this specified timeout and then uh, write uh, console.write line in action block. So that's my first uh, block that I've defined here. And let's see how you can use this action block. To use this action block, basically I'm going to send uh, some integer messages to it. So let's just try to do that. And here we have a for loop in C sharp and let's say I'm just going to send 10 messages here. To uh, send a message is very straightforward. Uh, you uh, get a reference to the block which I have already and I'm going to do a post and I'm going to send how many milliseconds to sleep and in this case I'm going to just send a fixed amount so 1000 milliseconds or 1 and I'm going to uh, check whether this succeeded or not. So that's why I have this if statement. So let's just fill that in. And what we're going to do is uh, pretty simple. We're going to write whether it succeeded or not. And uh, here is the message. And um, we are going to just say successful post, for example. And in the else case, uh, we are going to write uh, that the post failed. console.write line failed post. So what this is uh, going to asynchronously do is uh, send a message to our action block and uh, if succeeds it posts successful post and then failed post and we still have the stopwatch to measure the time and uh, in the end we are doing this. So let's uh, run this and see what it does. So I'm just uh, uh, going to clear this previous run out here just to make it easy to see. And uh, let's just quickly run this. And uh, the reason I'm doing this is to show you how this uh, normally behaves. So here you can see that we uh, have the hello world. And then we are getting all the successful post messages from here. Where it says it's successfully posted. And then it says done and it took 11 milliseconds. But however you would note that when we get this action block. We were going to sleep for about uh, one second or thousand milliseconds and write in action block. So that has never, that has not really happened and the program has exited. So the reason uh, that is kind of in, uh, interesting is that this messages are asynchronously posted and it's not waiting for them to really happen. But uh, these messages are being delivered here, but they, we, we haven't really waited enough to see what happened with them. So uh, one thing we can do is uh, we can wait for this worker block to complete. So let's just do that and see what happens. So we can say block dot complete and complete essentially means that uh, this block is not going to get any more new messages. So that by itself uh, will tell us that uh, to the TPL data action block that no messages are going to come now. But we still are not waiting for all the actions to be done. 
and to wait for that what you have to do or you can do is block and you can use uh, what is called uh, uh, completion uh, property and then you can essentially uh, chain another task with continue with and here we are going to uh, wait for it to come back so let's just do that p uh, is an action and we are going to uh, wait for it to come back so uh, so what we want to do is we don't want to really do this stopwatch at this point because this is not going to wait and it's kind of exiting the program what we want to do is we uh, wait for when this thing uh, action is completed we want to stop the stopwatch then and write down the information so let's just do that for example and i'm going to format this so it looks nicer and let's see what happens to the program at this point if we run this again and it should just take a few seconds so here you can see this is very interesting either so it says hello world it did all the successful post and uh, it didn't even uh, wait for it to come wait to do all this messaging and everything else and the pro problem is that our program is not really waiting for all these things to end so to fix this what we can do is i can just say console dot uh, read key and i'm going to wait in my program for it to all end really and let's just clear this and see what happens So here you can now see that it is since we are waiting in the main program now uh, we are getting those action blocks messages that we had and as you can see it took a long time to complete also so uh, it took about uh, let's say in this case 10 seconds so this is actually uh, one of the ways you can use your TPL data flow so one thing to remember from all this uh, you can do actions in action blocks uh, if you have to specify what kind of class uh, or a value parameter you want your task to handle and that's going through a generic like this in this case it's just an int to send messages you can just do a post which is asynchronous you should always check what messages uh, what is the status from post so you can see whether it's successful or failed uh, if you believe your block is not going to get any more uh, messages it is better to say block dot complete and when in the completion property is happening you should uh, continue with and uh, do whatever else you need to do in this case we wanted to make sure we got the right time uh, how long did it take to elapse so this is actually a quick overview on this uh, another thing you can do is when you're doing this action uh, blocks you can specify as options and i'm going to just demonstrate to you one quick option and uh, that's going to be uh, execution data flow option data flow block options and uh, I'm going to just specify one option it's called max degree of parallelism and in this case I'm going to set it to 2 and uh, let's just run this thing and see if it makes any difference in our time so you can see the time was here uh, 10 seconds I'm going to clear this and I'm running on a Mac on the .NET Core, uh, just uh, as an FYI. And uh, let's just, uh, sorry, this ought to be in the project itself, not the solution. <coughs> and we are going to run this thing again and see what difference does it make. So as you can see, it is going through the action blocks. And here you can see the time has almost been cut in half. So this uh, uh, max degree of parallelism can be your friend if you want it to speed up some processing which can happen in parallel. So this is really a quick overview. I wanted to get started on TPL data flows. Uh, please watch out for my new and other uh, videos I will do. And uh, I'm going to put this under on my website in Agorso CS TPL data flow action block. Thank you for watching this short screencast. And you have a great day.